Next up on WTV, Frisco Community Parade, a student DJ, and this week's edition of Real Talk. WTV's daily update starts now. Hey there, Red Hawk Nation. Today is Friday, November 12th, and I'm Allison Lastavica with today's daily update, brought to you by Wingspan TV. After being canceled last year, this year's Frisco Community Day Parade is just around the corner. WTV's Hayes Walker has the details. The Frisco Day Parade is set to return this year in full swing. The purpose of the parade is to celebrate Veterans Day and to invoke community pride. Clubs, departments, schools, and organizations from all around Frisco will participate to show their Frisco pride by riding on and walking by a decorated float. There will be judges that will select winners in several categories, including the FISD Spirit Award, the Mayor's Award, the Best Theme Award, and the Most Creative Award. The parade is set to be on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It will start at Toyota Stadium and go east through historic downtown Frisco. Reporting for WTV, this is Hayes Walker. The TREAT initiative attempts to unite the community and promote socialization. WTV's Kirthi Gamani has a story. Together, Reading, Eating, and Talking, or TREAT, is a one-day event that will be held tomorrow. The event hopes to promote literacy and is supported by local businesses. Students can go to a participating business and order using the hashtag TREATFISD to get a special discount. A list of participating businesses can be found on the Frisco ISD website. From there, students can discuss anything they've read with their friends and family over their food and drinks. There will also be an award for the school with the most participating students. To be a part of the contest, students must create a post on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram of them participating in the event and use the hashtag TREATFISD with their school's name. Reporting for WTV, I'm Kirithi Gamadi. When you think of DJing, you probably imagine a huge festival with strobe lights and a massive crowd. But for one student, it's something he does purely out of love for the music. WTV's Gautam Garg has a story. Music is something that almost everyone loves. It's no doubt one of the only universal languages that people use. And for Brazilian exchange student John Victor, playing music for others is one of his newfound passions, which he's been doing for a little over a year. I always like electronic music, so I had some friends that they were DJs and I asked them to teach me about these things and I enjoyed so I, I got a controller and then I started. Victor's love for the music has led him to playing parties in his hometown back in Brazil. I like the freedom that you can remix the way you want like, and it's cool because you can do a lot of funny things with the music, so it's fun. However, playing in front of crowds doesn't come without its challenges. It's difficult like, to know the time of the, the songs. You need to pay attention to them because when you do the transi transition, you need to be aware of the time. I think it's one of the most difficult parts. Reporting for WTV, I am Gautam Garg. Switching gears, Liberty's football team has advanced to playoffs. WTV's Kate Graham has more on this week's Real Talk. Hey Red Hawks, it's WTV's Kate Graham with this week's edition of Real Talk. Today I'll be asking football players and coaches about the upcoming playoff game. How do you feel going into the game against Forney after a win against Lovejoy? Um, it's going to be a tough game, you know, as uh, Forney is the number two seed in their district, so it's going to be a def it's definitely going to be a tough game. You know, we're ready, we're mentally preparing, and uh, we're hoping we have the uh, people to combat it. We feel pretty good. Um, we're confident that we can win. Uh, we know that if we just keep doing what we've been doing um, and just treat it as another game, then we'll be good. You know, I feel pretty good, you know, because Lovejoy was a really good team, and when it good gets them, showed that we have potential in the playoffs. I feel good. I mean, it was good to beat Lovejoy, and that gives us confidence that we can play with people. But at the same time, Forney's a different team. Uh, we got to prepare a little bit differently, and we got to uh, realize we're zero and zero now, and the season starts all over. So I do feel good about our preparation. How have you all been preparing for the game? Um, mostly mental preparation. We feel that we're physical enough, and the, uh, these guys are big. But I mean, if we uh, play our if we play our game, we're definitely going to come out with a win. We've honestly been preparing just like any other week. Um, it's just been normal practice. Um, but we're excited. We're locked in. So we look at film for their team, and then we uh, run our practice against the defense that they will be running. 
the same way we always do. I mean, it's a playoff game, but at the same time, the things that win playoff games are the things that win uh, every game all year long. We need to make sure we're blocking properly. We need to make sure we're reading what we're supposed to read and doing our job. So um, same thing we always do. What's going to be the toughest part about the game? I feel the toughest part about the game, for me especially, is going to be going against those guys play after play because they are pretty big. So it's going to be more of the uh, mental toughness, just trying to stay through it. And Izzy's going to be pretty far away, so keep the motivation up is going to be a big factor as well. Uh, you know, going into playoffs, every team that we face um, is going to be good, so there's definitely going to be ups and downs in every game we play. So it's just going to have to be us staying together as a team and uh, knowing that we can win. Forney is a really good team, and them winning against Royce City, I mean, it's going to up their standards, and they expect to win against us, but we're going to have to put up a tough fight. I think the toughest part is we're going to go uh, up against a pretty uh, big crowd. We're playing at their place. Uh, Forney's got a good team. They've done a good job all year long of keeping games close and finding ways to win in the end, uh, but so have we. So their strengths are our strengths, and our kids believe in what we're doing. Uh, so I feel confident that we're going to go to Forney and uh, have a good night. Reporting for WTV, I'm Kate Graham. The Red Hawk football team begins its playoff run tonight against Forney. WTV's TJ Kerlowitz has this and more on today's sports. Tonight will be the start of the UIL 5A football playoffs for the Red Hawks with the team taking a road trip to play Forney High School. I think they're kind of like, kind of like a rock hill. So I think it should be a decent game, but I definitely think we're going to come out on top. The Red Hawks finished the season 9-1, which earned the team a share of the District 7-5A championship along with Lovejoy and Frisco. Coming off a 27-24 win against Lovejoy, ranked number two in the state at the time, head coach Matt Sweeney believes the Lovejoy game got the team prepared for playoffs. Well, it should. You know, it should have all the confidence in the world, and, you know, it's just a matter of going out and, and uh, you put that escrow in, and, and now you start writing checks on it. And so that's, that's what the playoffs is about. Kickoff will be at 7.30 at Forney. The boys basketball team will take the court for the first time this season with a matchup against Prosper on Saturday. Honestly, I'm just looking for, um, you know, the opportunity to compete. I'm looking for us to um, play a really good 6A team, a team that um, a lot of people have pegged to be a playoff team. And uh, it's our home opener, so we're just looking forward to us, you know, getting out there and playing our best brand of basketball we can. With a new season starting, senior Drew Johnson believes the team is ready to compete. I think we're very prepared. Uh, we practice long practices. Sometimes we go till 6, but... We do a lot of play polish and we, uh, we're getting on to that. A lot of new players, so we have to learn all those plays that some of us already know. But they're catching on, and so going into our first game, I feel like we're ready to play. The game against Prosper will start at 5.30 at the Nest. And finally, yesterday was the first day of the Dallas Mavericks Girls Basketball Fall Classic Tournament. The Red Hawks hosted Dallas Skyline yesterday, in which the Red Hawks went for 59 points and route to a 22-point victory to start off the tournament. The girls have already started their next game as they travel back to the nest to play Prosper at 9 a.m. this morning. Reporting for WTV, this is CJ Krolowitz. If you're looking for more from Wingspan, you can follow us at Liberty Wingspan on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or visit our award-winning website, libertywingspan.com. And now for today's announcements. Please donate your new or very gently used clothes to support students in our district through the Frisco Threads program. You can earn up to six service hours for your donation. The bins are in the rotunda for drop-off until November 17th. PTSA is having its general meeting at 7 p.m. in the library on November 17th. That's it for today's daily update. This is Allison Lastavica for Weekspan TV.